I'm about to lose my brain stuck inside this ghetto rapture I got a lot of smoke, if you want it, you can have it They want a hat trick, but this is black girl magic Ain't talking about the kind that'll make you disappear But I'm talking about the power of the melanin within Ain't looking for trouble, but I'ma say this one time I put two dupes up if you try to touch mine We still want justice for Samir and Trayvon You say you don't see color, but racism ain't blind They targeting little kids whose skin look just like mine so I'm paranoid, it's a war zone outside And I'm a black queen, so if you ask me to step out of my car You gon' have to snatch me, cause I ain't going no damn well Had to spend my whole life living unfair Ancestors got my back and they right here You can never understand, it's a nightmare Living in my black shoes by the black rules You can keep your handshake, I don't dap coon The white man would go nuts if he cash shoot but you all on his side like a damn fool. Make it make sense. We are oppressed. Queen. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. Make it Queen. make sense. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armor diet. So the only way we're going to get some of this Armor diet. oppression and exploitation Queen. away from us or aside from us is come together Queen. against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the texture of diet. your hair? Parents, pay attention to the books, the school system, even to your little children. Lies mixed with wisdom. His skin too bright, so he was blind to the prison. My skin just right, so I collide with the vision. You trying to pray to God, but we tied the religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay, miss, how we gon' make the slave rich. But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. We missing moderation. They trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations. I'm getting tired of Satan. We are oppressed. Queen. I'm getting tired of waiting. We are downtrodden. Queen. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armor diet. So the only way we're going to get some of this Armor diet. oppression and exploitation. Queen. Touch one of my new sons. They show no love for the 
queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got... Right, hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in once again to the original Queen Amadai Shakur show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your daily vitamins. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. All right. Be sure to get those likes up. Y'all know how they be hating on the Queen of these YouTube streets. Okay, and so with that all being said, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Underscore A Shakur, TikTok at Dr. A Shakur, and Twitter at DGoddess27. And if you don't like what the queen is cooking, you already know what to do. Don't come in here whining and complaining about Diddy, trying to throw me off, trying to get me to not talk about it and all of that. Say, oh, we have all this other stuff to talk about. Don't even think about it, all right? Because ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, and so with that all being said, hold on, I'm checking something real quick. Okay, so with that all being said, let's get into it. All right, I apologize for being tardy. Y'all know how it is. Okay, <laughs> so hello, Aboriginal woman, RG Titan, Buckhorse DC, Pearly. All right, Najra is here. Juju said, Queen is Queen, and thank you. Pauline, all right. Uh, then we have Reggie. Okay, um, let's get into it. All right, get those likes up. Miss Courtney J in the house, Deronda. Okay, Tracy, I see you, that crazy beast Aries. All right, so y'all know I love me some royals. Oh, so let's get into it. It's all nefarious as per usual. Okay, Curly Girl, I see you. Leon in the house. Missions Vision. Lana L is here. All right. William Extra is here. Okay. Well, let's get into it, Khalid. Nessie X in the house. Sophie. All right. Let's get started. 169 and King Lejean. All right. Shout out to you. Okay, so let's talk about Diddy. Let's talk about Diddy because I find it absolutely nefarious. Now, let me just pull up this uh, TikTok idea for those of you who missed the upload that I did last night. But I, I must warn you that during the uh, during this live, you might hear a doorbell ring because I'm expecting a package. So just ignore it. If it does ring, I'll just briefly put you on pause. All right. But with that all being said, I want you all to look at these uh Last couple of TikToks I did. Because <laughs> Diddy is so nefarious. And here's the thing. Here's what I want to say. For any of the people that are still foolishly, and yes, it's clearly obtuse. For anyone that's still trying to cape for Diddy, I don't care if you say, oh, I'm not trying to take up for anybody. I'm not trying to defend him. Yeah, when you start your sentence with that, that's clearly what you're trying to do. If you were not trying to do it, you wouldn't have to preface your sentence with saying that. Because anyone listening would know that's not what you're trying to do. So there'd be no need to tell us. With that all being said, for the people who are foolishly still trying to defend him, what do they have to say about the fact that he left his sons holding the bag and he was on a whole jet, okay, at the Opelika airport about to go to the Bahamas? What do they have to say about that? I just have questions because even if they want to deny the things that he's been accused of and say that, oh, it's about a money grab, oh, you know, it's just because, you know, um, he sued Diageo. Well, yeah, that is why it is. I told you all that back in November when Cassie filed the first lawsuit. I told you all, I was probably the first one that said it, that of course, this is all because he was suing Diageo. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't negate the fact uh, that these things that he's accused of, he likely did, because here's the thing. We've all heard about Diddy. Okay, we've all heard the rumors. We've all heard the allegations and all of this for decades. OK, we've been hearing this stuff for almost 30 years. OK, let's just keep it a buck at the end of the day. Have we not? All right. Tupac's been dead 27 years, has it been? And we heard from the beginning that Diddy had something to do with it. And we still keep hearing it. OK, even Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, who's now who's now facing trial on November the 4th, he even said it himself. So with that all being said, please stop trying to act like Diddy didn't do anything and that these people are just trying to bring him down simply because he sued Diageo. Because while that is the catalyst for what he's going through, that is not the only reason. Because here's the thing. These people who sit up here and say, well, you know, so-and-so got their ninja wake-up call. How come they're not saying the same thing about Diddy? 
Because that's what he's getting. That's what he's gotten. He's gotten a ninja wake up call. Diddy has never collectively, uh, for the most part, worked at the interest of people who look like him. Now, he's pretended to with things like revolt and all of that. But at the end of the day, he was always working for Clive Davis and people who look like him. That's what he's always been doing. Why do you think he snitched on TLC and let Clive know that they were coming up there to demand their money? Why do you think he went and told the uh, the uh, record execs who wear the small hats? Why do you think he went and told them, him and Jay-Z, his ace boon coon, uh, why do you think he went and told them that Suge Knight, Irv Gotti, and some others, uh, Dame Dash, were all trying to start a black distribution company? so that they could put a halt to it and then said that they were being extorted and that they were trying to be forced to go along with it. Why do you think they did that? He's a whole snitch. So at the end of the day, and again, he is absolutely a snitch because what do snitches do? Well, these are people who conduct themselves in criminal manners, which Diddy has. He's been accused of several crimes. Please pay attention. And then he goes and tells something. Now, he didn't go to the police per se, but he still went and snitched to Massa about people who look like him. So I'm sorry. He's not a whole raccoon. He's not a whole raccoon. Y'all want to sit up here and act like, oh, we shouldn't be doing this. He's a black man. Why is it that black people are always laughing or glad when another black person goes down? First of all, that's a lie. That's a lie because here's the thing. See, people try to use that talking point to paint a narrative. But let me just remind them that when Michael Jackson was accused of certain things, we knew the most of us, the collective of us, there may be a few who were fooled, but most of us felt like that was lies. And most of us spoke up for Michael Jackson, and we still do. Uh, so also the same for Bill Cosby. Okay? So let's not sit here and act like every time a person who looks like me gets called out of some BS that we all are so glad to see it coming. No, we're glad to see it coming when that person is a detriment to our community. Just because you have skin like mine doesn't mean that I have to go along with your foolishness and that I have to defend you. That's what it doesn't mean, nor do any of you at the end of the day. Uh, so please don't let them try to persuade you, you know, try to guilt you or make you feel like it's something wrong with you because you're glad that Diddy's getting everything that he in fact deserves. Okay. I mean, all of these people are lying. All of these people are making things up. And then for the foolish people who say things like, well, Cassie stayed there for 10 years. Well, I'm sorry. Have you not ever heard of a trauma survivor? Have you never heard of someone who's abused, abused women? How long do most abused women stay in their relationships before they finally gain the strength and wherewithal to leave? I'm sorry. Say what? Okay. Now they can sit here and say she was staying in it for the money, the lifestyle, her career, whatever. Maybe she was to some degree, but at the end of it, she was also terrified for her life. And mind you, she did try to leave on several occasions and allegedly, not only according to her, but according to other people who were employed by Diddy, they said that people would go and bring her back. Okay. So I'm sorry. Please stop trying to sit up here and paint narratives as if we're all those of us who are reporting on Diddy and going in on him on a daily that there's something wrong with us. Like we're not standing up for our own people. Diddy ain't my people. And I don't care what color his skin is. He's not my people. I don't like Diddy. And I hope that he gets a life sentence in prison. And I mean that from the depths of my soul. Because that's what he deserves as far as I'm concerned. I don't feel sorry for him in the least. The only ones I feel sorry for are his children, whom he too has victimized. Why would you get your son involved in your mess, either of them? Now, just the new lawsuit, the amended lawsuit, which I read to you all the other day uh, from Rodney Jones, says that Justin was involved in the freak-offs. Says that Justin was supposed to go out there and recruit the girls. The underage ones. So yeah, that's what you have your son doing. I'm sorry, if that doesn't paint him alone as a despicable person. What does? Yeah, some of these people are capable for him, quite frankly. Well, you know, some of them have done the same things he's done. Please pay attention. Some of them have dated underage girls. And some of them are down low needed. Some of them have committed S assaults. Some of them have harassed and abused women. Some of them actually have. That's why I let's sit up there trying to defend Diddy and then acting like, oh, it's because I'm white and I say so. No, it's because Diddy did the dirt. 
Because even if it were for that, if he hadn't done anything, there'd be nothing for them to pin on him unless they manufactured something. And then we clearly be able to see through that because we're all, you know, able to have and use common sense. They have facts, proof and receipts on Diddy and they've been having it for years. Let's not forget that before any of this stuff happened currently, back in 2011, Diddy was under investigation or there was questions about him messing around with, with young boys that were asked of Jimmy the Henchman. I'm sorry, say what? So that means they already had suspicions about him a long time ago. This has nothing to do with anything other than he did the dirt, okay? Yeah, he sued Diageo and that ticked them off. But like I said, that's nothing more than him getting his ninja wake up call because they gave him power and money and all of that and allowed him to have a seat at their table. But then as soon as he turns on one of them or a group of them, this is what always happens. It's not anything new. This is the same thing that happened to Candace Owens, why she's fired from the Daily Wire. I bet you these same people defending Diddy will say that Candace got her ninja wake up call and she did. But why don't they realize and why can't they admit and confess that Diddy got his too? Okay. Diddy got his too. He's the same one that told us vote or die. Ah, yeah. All right. Being used as a whole democratic shield as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, I digress. Now, let me drop these receipts. Like some, everyone, please like and share. I'm going to share my screen so you all can see these couple of TikToks and then we're going to get into it. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Amadai Shakur. This is the latest update on Diddy. So his alleged mule has been arrested and also Rodney Jones's lawsuit has been amended. Now he's added someone to the lawsuit and someone else has a declaration in there and they're supposedly willing to cooperate. Let's get into it. 25 year old Brendan Paul was named in Jones's lawsuit as the alleged mule for Diddy. Now he was arrested by Miami-Dade police yesterday at around 4.30 p.m. They were working in conjunction with Homeland Security agents and they were at the Opelika airport where Diddy was on a private jet separate from the rest of his party and he was sitting there waiting for some of them to show up. Well, Brendan was arrested uh, for having Coca-Cola and grass on his person. Okay, please pay attention. Diddy was supposedly waiting on the rest of his entourage who had apparently been stopped and were being questioned by agents. Okay, they caught him right in the nick of time because he was about to be up out of here, leaving his sons to hold the bag. He had his entourage with him, but not his own children. Okay, but we shouldn't be surprised because remember, Rodney Jones said in his lawsuit uh, that when Diddy was threatening him, one of the things he said was that if it got in the way of him getting what he wanted, he would take out his own mother. And he said, so what do you think I'll do to you? Uh, so yeah, we shouldn't be surprised at all that he threw his own kids under the bus. Now, Jones also listed Cuba Gooding Jr. in the lawsuit as someone who had harassed him and basically said that he groped him on a yacht and all of that, and he thought Diddy was trying to pass him off to him. Well, now he's officially named Cuba Gooding Jr. as a defendant in the case, accusing him of S assaulting him. Okay, so please pay attention. Ethiopia Habitamarium, who is the former CEO of Motown and also a friend of Diddy's, uh, who was also named in the lawsuit as a defendant because Rodney Jones said that she was one of the people who was supposed to be, you know, basically enabling Diddy in his nefariousness and that she was supposed to be making sure there was no underage people at the parties and that no one was having anything slip through their drinks and all of that. But of course, she didn't do any of it. And in fact, she was also coming to Diddy's home, according to Jones, and she would disappear into the room with him for hours. Okay, the same thing he said about Lucian Grange. Uh, but nonetheless, now it looks like she's jumped ship. Because in the amended lawsuit that was done yesterday, it says Declaration of Ethiopia Habitamarium. She says, I have personal knowledge of the facts set forth uh, here too, which are known by me to be true and correct. And if called upon to testify as a witness, I could and would uh, competently testify thereto. Uh, so clearly she's willing to snitch. Okay, yeah, this is all going real wrong, real quick for Diddy. Also, I think that Diddy was trying to throw the agents off because he was clearly playing a game of cat and mouse and, you know, trying to send them on a wild goose chase because TMZ tracked his private jet to the Caribbean, to Antigua yesterday. Now we know that it landed there and he wasn't on it. Of course, he was in Miami. But prior to that, Sunday and Monday, it was taken off from Sacramento Executive Airport Sunday evening around 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and then landed at Palm Springs International Airport about an hour later. After that, it took off from Palm Springs, okay? And then 
It was about 30 minutes later, around 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, it was in the L.A. area. And around 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time Monday, the jet took off from Van Nuys Airport and landed at some point in Antigua. So why was this plane constantly on the go? Why was it moving around so much? Well, like I said, likely because Diddy was trying to throw them off his scent. Okay, please pay attention. All right, people. So with that all been said, y'all heard it, but let me go to the next one because here's the thing. Um, Diddy is all nefarious as far as I'm concerned, okay? Like people trying to cape for him just really make themselves look foolish and suspect. All right, that's just what it is. Now, he left his sons there holding the bag, and he was on his way up out of here. Tell me that's not nefarious. Uh, <laughs> say F them kids without saying F them kids. Okay, that's what Diddy did. I mean, please pay attention. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Amadai Shakur, and I'm back with another update about Diddy. So it looks like Diddy and his private jet have vanished. Let's get into it. The 20-seat black Gulfstream Aerospace G550 aircraft registered to Love Air LLC has gone off the radar. Okay, this is all so crazy. Please pay attention. Yeah, there's no data for it available online at this time. And a statement from flightaware.com says this aircraft in 1969C is no longer available for public tracking, okay, per the request of the owner or operator. This is all so crazy. So this jet is gone and so is Diddy. So Diddy's likely fled the country for all we know. I mean, they should have confiscated his passport as far as I'm concerned. And so, yeah. And then mind you, neither he nor his sons, Justin and King Combs, none of them were arrested. You know, Justin and King were simply detained and then they were allowed to leave. And uh, yeah, they went to the mansion, grabbed their things and got the H up out of there. Okay, please pay attention. The brothers appeared to return to the L.A. property separately on Monday night and they gathered their things. And so Justin arrived about 10.30 p.m. local time and basically got his things quickly, gathered them up and got up out of their scene, taking out boxes and all of that. And then a few hours later, that's when King came and he did the same thing. He got his things and fled. And here you can see Justin returning to the property, trying to cover himself in his hoodie, uh, basically trying to go undetected. But like I said, he left there with boxes and bags. And so they're out of there. Armed guards were stationed outside of the Miami Mansion complex today, and they were dressed in all black with black surgical masks, and they refused to let anyone in, and they would not say as to whether or not Diddy was on the property. Now, when questioned as to whether or not Diddy was inside the mansion or not, uh, one of them said, I don't know anything about that. And the other one growled at reporters and told them they better not step foot on Diddy's property. <laughs> Please pay attention. And in other news, Brendan Paul, who's Diddy's alleged mule, uh, who was arrested, well, he's a former player for Syracuse, okay? He played from 2018 to 2020, and in those two seasons, he did long minutes and at least 17 games. He then transferred to Fairmont State University in West Virginia, where he played alongside uh, Jim Boheim's son, Buddy. And let me correct myself. Um, he actually played with Jim Boheim's son, Buddy, in high school, okay? And he helped to lead Brewster Academy to the National Prep School Championship. Now, I said all that to say this. Uh, you don't think this young man is right now singing like the Mississippi Mass Choir? Oh, yeah, of course he is. Please pay attention. Y'all know that man's already snitching, honey. If he hasn't snitched already, he will be soon, okay? He absolutely will be soon. I'm willing to bet money on it, okay? <sighs> all so nefarious, all right? And so with that all been said, let me show you all what they did to Diddy's house when they went in there and conducted that raid. Now, there's no audio in the video because a person on TikTok did this, and I took out the audio because they had music playing. But hold on, let's just take a look at Diddy's house.
Yeah, all right. So there y'all see it. Please pay attention. Now, uh, Slim Thug has some things to say about Diddy. You know, Slim Thug needs to sit down somewhere. I am so tired of him. What makes him think that anyone wants to listen to what he has to say? This is the same man who had relations, allegedly, with his own cousin. <laughs> with his own cousin. But I'm supposed to listen to him? No, I don't think so, buddy. I don't think so. Him and Kevin Gates both need to have several seats messing with their own cousins. But anyway, I digress. I don't want to see a black man who came so far almost to a billion dollars fall down. That's our inspiration for It ain't too many of us. I don't want to see. They took Kanye down. We forgot about Kanye. And it, good thing he uh able to do his own man. That's how I look at it, man. We losing another billionaire over allegations at this point. Still ain't no criminal charges. You know what I'm saying? We only got about one billionaire left. Who? Jay-Z? That's the only motherfucker left. Everybody else? Let's take the person off of it and, and who that person is, right? Man, listen. If Look at who is wishing this dude fail. You know what I'm saying? It's his own people. It's his own people cheering him, laughing, and Diddy did it, and coming up with new slogans for him. It's his own people, man. Like, so take note of this. Man, you would think, mother he thought a year or two ago when we were popping Ciroc, he thought that we would ride or die for him, man. Like, he thought that the motherfucking world of hip hop would stay down and over, you know, especially without him having a case. Like, especially without him having a case, he would think, hey, man, they're going to ride for me. I, I live for this hip hop shit. I lived and died this shit. The hip hop community is going to ride for my innocence. He would assume, I'm sure. Say if he did that, then whatever he get, he get. But so far, I haven't seen no criminal charges. So out for that, I'ma just sit back and hope for the best. You know, I don't want to see nobody go down, man. And for people to celebrate that, love that, want to see that, is weird to me, man. So like, it made me want to stay in the house. And people you would never, never knew they existed, want to see this man, whatever. If you if if you work for me if if I uh came up under you and you over me fuck you I don't want to do no business with you fuck you I don't want to see you in the streets but do I want to see you go to jail for life nigga like you help me be a part of my play regardless if I like you not <sighs> I'm so sick of him. Now, hold on. Let's do a poll. Hold on. Reggie said, I'm not trying to hear anything he's saying. He sounded ignorant and uninformed. Thank you. He, did, he darn sure is. I almost cursed. I almost cursed. Honey. He going to get the queen all upset. Courtney J said, and I I ain't forgot how he did uh, La, LaToya. Mm hmm. The Maya, he just said, dude, Captain. Yes, he absolutely is. Okay, Tisha said an evil person like Diddy needs to be locked up. He does. Okay, he absolutely does. In general population. All right, and here's the thing. Let's not forget how he let Shine take the fall for him. Okay, isn't that what Rodney Jones said? Diddy told him that he's the one that shot those people in that club. And then the lady who it happened to said that she saw Diddy pull the trigger. So please miss me with it. So I'm sorry. He's gotten away with enough nefariousness to last a lifetime as far as I'm concerned. It's time that he paid the piper. Uh, so by Diddy, that's what I want to be saying. But here's the thing. You know, I was thinking, there were some people in the chat yesterday, some Diddy apologists, and they were saying, oh, Diddy's got Donald Trump money. Oh, Diddy's not going to go to jail. Well, you know what? He may not go. He may not go. And if he doesn't go to prison, it won't be because he doesn't deserve to be there. It'll be because the elites, okay? It'll be because the people that are over him, his handlers, okay? It'll be because those people don't want to be exposed themselves. And so, therefore, uh, they may not allow him to go. Which is why I think he hasn't been arrested yet. They're like, they really don't know where he is. He was literally in their grasp. What they should have told him is, hey, listen, don't make any trips out of the country soon. Okay, hand over that passport. That's what they should have done. Okay, that's what they should have done. And then somebody yesterday, when I was closing out the live, somebody said, when, when I was talking about them uh, confiscating his passport, and I said they should have done that. And then somebody said, well, you don't need a passport to get on a private jet. No. But you do need a passport to enter another country. It doesn't matter what 
jet you flew there on, commercial or private. At the end of the day, when you arrive in another country, you have to have your passport. Okay, so that's why they should have confiscated it. It looks to me like they're trying to give him a free pass. I foresee, I'm going to go ahead and make the prediction. I foresee this whole thing with Diddy ending up like Epstein. I see the whole thing ended up like Epstein. If Diddy is convicted or whatever, and he goes and he's sentenced, well, he's not going to do his time. He's going to end up like Epstein, either at his own hand or the hands of some somebody else. That's just what I believe. And I'm not wishing him on him. I'm just saying what I really think will happen. And, or if that doesn't happen, he just won't go, period. And they'll allow him to leave the country, perhaps, uh, just like, what's his name, Roman Polanski. Now, let's not forget that Sloan Bella said they were going to silence him. She said that his mouth would be sewn shut. So maybe they're just going to do something to keep him from talking ever about what happened. But at the end of the day, I don't think he's going to get what he deserves. But I wish that he would. Okay? The end of the day. King LeJean said Russell Simmons. Exactly. Okay, so that I've been saying. Let me continue. Like up, everyone. Please like and share. Um, I'm going to play for you all what Joy Reid and Torrey had to say about Diddy. Okay, likes up, everyone. Thank you in advance. And ...executed search warrants at two properties in Los Angeles and Miami belonging to rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs. A source familiar with the matter told NBC News that Combs is the subject of a federal investigation following a wave of lawsuits that have been filed against him. Those lawsuits, including from his former girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, alleged physical and sexual abuse, which Combs has denied. The source also confirmed that three women and a man have been interviewed by federal officials in Manhattan in relation to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms. Late today, Combs' lawyer issued the following statement. Quote, yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There was no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. This, this unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There's been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Unquote. Joining me now is Teray, host of Masters of the Game. The new season premieres Friday on The Grio. Uh, what is going on? Because we did also see... Uh, Diddy's sons arrested. They were detained. They weren't detained. arrested. They were just detained. Yeah. But what is going on? Well, it, it seems that there are several people who are saying things about Combs to the government, and they are trying to figure out what's going on. I found it interesting that they had enough to get a search warrant, right, yeah. for multiple places, but not enough yet to arrest him. So we're in the investigation phase, and clearly they don't care right. if we let him know what that we know what's going on. Yeah. But it seems part of uh, part of his whole life, his whole journey has been this sort of scorched earth campaign where you see him continuing to succeed or do big things and leave people in his wake hurt. We go back to CCNY, which he a, a, a party that he over promoted that people yes. ended up getting killed. You think about the many artists who either left, you know, in complaint or went to the church or you know, died nice. after, like, you know, I mean, there was a lot of dis, a lot of disheartened artists who left him yeah. that he raised up Shine. And, uh, on and on. Um, and now this, this large growing number of people who are alleging crazy stuff yes. about him. Yeah. And these are things that people in the industry have been hearing about. It's giving time. R. Kelly to right. It's giving it's 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 disturbing, you know. I was personally disturbed many years ago, okay? I, I I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I And he said, yes. And they were flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? And he wouldn't yeah. say. 
And years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh, and the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh, like, this is, this is how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So to hear that things went even further with potentially, allegedly, many other people, yeah. it, it, it's, it's not, I don't, it, you know, we, we feel like we've seen this coming. Well, there was the situation with obviously Russell Simmons, who does not live in the United States any further. Mm -hmm. You've got, you've had these situations obviously with R. Kelly. This feels like it is going down that kind of a track because you have multiple accusers with nothing proved. He's not been adjudicated a, you know, whatever. But it, it's, it's just talking. Video. And he paid Cassie a lot of money. A, a lot of money, and uh, you know, the, the people are coming with videos though. I mean, like evidence, not just hearsay. So I mean, this is a very very frightening situation. There was a period in the record business when a lot of wildness was going on yeah. of this sort. And sure. here's another shoe drop. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I think, talk about where he says, because what he's saying sounds very Trumpy. Yeah. It's talking about a witch hunt. Yeah. Uh, I had somebody text me earlier today. I think I texted you today and forwarded it to you that somebody is saying, watch for him to try to weaponize sort of a Trump sort of narrative or watch the Trump people try to weaponize what's happening in favor of Trump to say, look, there's this persecuted black man like me that who's like me and try to weaponize it. I mean, it I feels hate, very Trumpish. I, I hate to say that anyone is like Trump, but there is something in the rise, the long term rise of Puff and that he seemed to create his own reality to yeah. demand that everyone around him follow what he wanted. Yeah. And people did. He had a ton of money behind him to start Bad Boy at a very young age. Yeah. And would just treat me. I mean, he's called me up and screamed at me on more than one occasion, and lots yeah. of people would say that. So the ego was gigantic. The yeah. ability to create the reality that he wanted yeah. seemed to be there. But also to create a reality that was dangerous. I mean, I think for a lot of hip hop fans, the the the, the failure to protect Notorious B.I.G., the fail, you know, the, the sort of egging on of an East Coast West Coast rivalry between friends that were people who knew and respected each other and didn't have to be beefing, and to sort of let that violence come, it, you know, I think for a lot of us, uh, we, and that, and also oversampling and uh, making hip hop into a sample machine. Don't make it. Don't get me started. Now you're doing that. Now I'm doing that. But I'm only doing that because you're my friend and you'll defend me. <laughs> no, no, don't get me started, Aunt Sare. Uh, how does this go? Is he in the United States? Do we know where he is? I don't know. I can't even. I can't even call. Yeah. Well, you have to come back when you get more information. To write, thank you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new. So, as far as I'm concerned, no country should let people like Diddy in. Because if he's done all these things here, yeah, what makes them think he won't do it there? And, you know, I think that was an excellent example or comparison when she said using the Trump narrative. Because, yes, they're already saying that it's a. Um, basically saying that it's a witch hunt. They're acting like there's no facts and proof and evidence. And these people that are trying to be apologists for him, like Slim Thug's ridiculous self, they're saying there's no evidence, but there is evidence. Here's the thing. Anybody with an ounce of sense with a brain the size of a mustard seed, you would know that Homeland Security investigating agents, the FBI, they're not coming to your house unless they know that there's some evidence. They're not coming there unwarranted and on baseless claims, okay? They're not gonna do that. They know something when they come like that. Now, I will say this, the evidence that they confiscated, they're absolutely, you know, uh, going to hide some of that, absolutely. As far as I'm concerned, that's my opinion because I've already told you all, these older, uh, wealthy people, that may potentially be on video footage uh, that Diddy has captured when they were at these parties. Yeah, they're not gonna let that stuff come out just like with Epstein. I told y'all it's the same thing. We saw them, I showed you the footage of them leaving out of Epstein's residence with all of these boxes of videos and all of these recordings. And where was that stuff? It never came to surface. Nobody ever talked about it during the Epstein trial. Okay, they never brought that stuff up. So with that all being said, it's going to be the same old thing because, yeah, they'll let Diddy, they'll throw him to the wolves. They'll throw him to the wolves just like they threw Epstein to the wolves, Harvey Weinstein, 
R. Kelly, they'll throw him to the wolves. But what they won't do is let all these other people, politicians, athletes, okay, these people in the music industry uh, that own the companies and all of that, uh, these big time CEOs for record labels, uh, these people who are in the movie industry and all of that, yeah, they're not going to expose them. These people who are foreign dignitaries and all of that, yeah, they're not going to expose them. That's what we should already know, okay? Uh, so with that I've been saying, somebody asked me the other day, or somebody asked me on one of my TikTok videos in the comment section, uh, where is Jeffrey Epstein buried? As though, you know, they were saying that he's still alive. Well, I absolutely believe Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein did. okay? His brother uh, had a, a second autopsy done and said that he was not hanged, that he was choked, strangled. So with that all been said, he's buried in a mausoleum right next to his parents in an unmarked, uh, and it's unmarked. There's no name on it. Now, for some of you, that may sound strange, but here's the thing. When people who don't look like me do the things that Epstein was convicted of, when they bury them, they will absolutely put them in unmarked graves. For those of you who've been following me for day one, you know that when I was on the True Crime channel, I did a story about Jimmy Savile. Okay, from over in the UK. And Jimmy Sable was accused of very similar things to what Epstein was doing. And he was somebody who was very wealthy and very popular and known and famous. And he was even knighted by Queen Elizabeth. But when this man was exposed and all these things came out about him, okay, and everyone knew who he really was and what he'd been doing for all these years. Well, after he passed away, he's buried in an unmarked grave. And the reason they bury them in an unmarked grave is because they don't want people to disturb disturb their graves, you know, by vandalizing it like they do people like Emmett Till and Fred Hampton. Okay, you see how we see these videos of how they shot up Fred Hampton's uh, grave site, Emmett Till's grave site, and then they have to repair it and all of that stuff. At the end of the day, this is what they do. And so they don't want anyone doing that to them, to their people, even though they're nefarious. So that's how that goes. Uh, but anyway... I find it all very interesting. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Now, let's go to what Mace had to say about Diddy. Then we're going to get into this uh, Nickelodeon thing. Because, yeah, I'm still on it. Please pay attention. And I found a connection between Nickelodeon and Epstein's Island. All right? Uh, so we're going to get into it. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Let me make sure I pull up the right video. Okay, here we go. What's up, man? How you doing? Killer, I'm doing good, man. Reparations is getting closer <laughs> and closer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to <laughs> give you your percentage. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with that money. That's all yours, man. I was on the next book. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Closer and closer. Closer huh, man? and closer. Okay. The big no, payback. You know, you, this has been the last year. It's really kind of been the big payback for you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Okay. You kind of, you kind of, you kind of, uh, last week, you went destiny. <laughs> yeah. You went destiny. <laughs> You know no. what? You know what happened yesterday, right? Yeah, man. That's what I'm trying to say. What, it's going what, crazy. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let you start. What did you see that happen? <laughs> I was on the next boat. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. I'm get closer and closer. Closer huh, man? and closer. Okay. <laughs> The big no, payback. You know, you, this has been the last year. It's really kind of been the big payback for you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Okay, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of, uh, last week, you went destiny. Yeah. You went destiny. You know no. what, you know what happened yesterday, right? Yeah, man. That's what I'm trying to say. What, it's going what, crazy. What happened? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let you start. What did you see that happen? Oh, yesterday was the anniversary of Biggie Smalls' album, 27 years yeah. later. That's what I seen yesterday. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, that was real. It's amazing that, that that all of this would transpire on that on that day. What's crazy is, is yesterday was Biggie Smalls' 27th anniversary of Life After Death. And it was also the Diplomat Immunity album, 21st anniversary. Mm. 
Shit, this shit going on. <laughs> it's going on. Man. Yeah, man. I was just saying this. That day oh, yesterday, yesterday was kind of. That's eerie, yeah, man. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, that was crazy. That's kind of crazy, man. I had no idea that, you know, the internet lets you know, because I don't be knowing these dates for my albums or other people's albums, but they will remind you, man. Yeah. That's all you see? Ain't a lot. That's what I always see. I seen helicopters <laughs> all kinds of all right. stuff. Okay. It's a lot of things. Yeah. Okay, so my mistake, one of those clips played twice. That was my poor editing job. But let me say this. Uh, T. Lo said Cam always sound like his nose is stuffy. Yeah, he really does. Some, some people talk through their nose. Uh, so with that all being said, here's the thing. <laughs> Angela Ever says T.D. Jakes is next as well. Um, here, Here's the thing, though. I think that's who Slim Thug was talking about. I'm sorry, I'm eating a peppermint again. Sorry, guys. But I think that's who Slim Thug was talking about when he said, you know, you're laughing at this person or whatever, rejoicing. And then he said, if you don't like the person because of business, that's one thing. But I would want to see somebody go to prison. He's clearly talking about Mace. OK, he's clearly talking about Mace. Above all, the drama said Rico incoming. Exactly. Mm -hmm. T Cope 67 said finna get swallowed up. OK. Uh, so anyway, here are some things that people posted, you know, um, as a tribute to Diddy. Hold on. Let me see if I can find this real quick. But like up, everyone, please like and share. Here we go. Just a brief clip of some tributes to Diddy because, you know, some people, like I said, some people still clearly uh, like Diddy and, uh, you know, they just don't want to see him go down. Lock his ass up. Lock his ass up. You're going to jail. You're going to jail. So nefarious. <laughs> so nefarious. Now, I had to remove that music because he was playing Diddy's song in that last clip. And actually, I got that from 50 Cent. That was what 50 Cent posted. Deronna said, that must be where Mary J got them dance moves from. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Okay. 209 says, uh, he nailed the Diddy dance. Absolutely. Okay. You know all the comedy smoke was coming for Diddy. You already know. You already know. Reggie says, who remembers Diddy dancing for Father MC and Stacey Lettisaw long ago, so long ago? I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. That's news to me, beloved. Thanks for sharing. Ha! Uh, Hotel Sahadi said 50 Cent needs to worry about his own cases coming. I don't think 50 Cent's going to have any cases. <laughs> I don't think 50 Cent's going to have any cases. But we shall see. The next person going down is going to be Jay-Z. Please pay attention. All right? It's going to be Jay-Z. Sloan Bella already called it, and I did too. Uh, yeah, okay. M, uh, M. Chanti, Chant I hope I said that right, uh, said that uh, 50 is hilariously petty. Absolutely. <laughs> Mad Dog Jack said there's no way out, Diddy. Okay, it sure isn't. Now, let me show you all this clip. Before I get into the whole Nickelodeon thing uh, in Epstein Island, let me show you all this clip. I showed it yesterday, but some of you missed it. 
So I'm going to show it again where Diddy was in fact on an episode of Nickelodeon. Okay, like stuff, everyone, please like and share. Thank you to Vince. Oh, what would P. Diddy do? No, I don't know. Hey, what's that? Oh, okay. P. Diddy? What's up? We can't wake up Shane. Try symbols? Yep. <laughs> what about sour milk? It didn't work. Tell you what. Take this toy helicopter. Put it down his pants. Now, I find that very interesting. Okay, they said they couldn't wake him up. And then he said, did you try symbols? Did you try sour milk? And none of that worked. And he said, take this toy helicopter and put it down his ass. Okay, more of the same subliminals. All right. And uh, more of the provocateur things that they were, are uh, the provocative things that they were doing in the broadcast I showed you all last week. Okay, yeah, suggestive things, shall I say? Uh, so yeah, I find it very interesting that Diddy was actually on an episode of Nickelodeon. All right, all right. So I find that interesting. Like I said, now I showed you all how they had all those su suggestive things. Um, why would they think that's funny to have a skit? where two boys are putting something down another boy's pants. Why do they think that's funny or cute? Okay. Reggie said so sinister. Absolutely. But now let's talk about Epstein Island and Nickelodeon. All right. Let's get into it. Let me show you all something. For those of you who haven't seen this, please pay attention. Look at this. Y'all don't find that suspicious. Y'all don't find that suspicious. I said y'all don't find that suspicious. Mm-hmm. Now, coincidence? I don't think so. I absolutely don't think so. Okay? I don't think that's a coincidence at all. But here's the thing. So, you know... Just think about all the stuff that I showed you all when I was doing the uh, when I was doing the expose on the docu series "Quiet on Set," which was exposing the nefarious things that occurred and inappropriate things that occurred on the set of Nickelodeon. But here's what they say: because you know, when we start figuring out stuff on the internet, they always say that's a conspiracy theory. That's not true. People on social media are, you know, they're just uh, making up conspiracy theories. Just pay attention. Because here's what they say. They say Jeffrey Epstein's P Island. Okay, I'm calling it X-File Island. All about all about convicted billionaires uh SEX abuse haven. Now, hold on. Now, as Americans wait for, for Epstein's associates who had been hiding from press for decades despite being alleged accomplices in his crimes. Okay, yeah. Now think, think about that. We never found out the information of who those accomplices were. Just a few of them in the court documents, but we never got the gist of the information. The documents were sealed, um, those names or whatever that the judge had supposedly. And it's going to be same, the same thing with Diddy. Please pay attention. But they go on to say, um, here's what you need to know about the 75-acre private island in the U.S. Virgin Island that Jeffrey Epstein once called home. Now, here's the thing. Don't you all remember don't you all remember in the lawsuits against Diddy that they talked about the U.S. Virgin Islands once in the chat when I read you all the lawsuit filing? I believe it's the one from Rodney Jones. Don't you remember they were talking about the U.S. Virgin Islands? Okay, so clearly Diddy was going there is all I'm saying. Now, with that all being said, goes on to say, Epstein called the island Little St. Jeff. Whereas for the local residents who witnessed the vulgar acts being committed there as uh, X-Files Island. That's what the people called it. Now, later in the criminal complaint referred to it as the perfect hideaway and haven for trafficking young women and um, girls. 
okay, for servitude, child abuse, and S assaults. Now, after being embroiled in Ghislaine Maxwell's trafficking trial for 20 years, the island was, uh, for 20 years, the island was sold and is now set to become a luxury home. Investment firm led by billionaire Stephen Deckoff purchased the island, uh, the two islands for $60 million. That's far less than the $100 million sale price. First of all, who would want to purchase that? But anyway, I digress. Now they say, where is the island located? The little island is located in the midst of coral reefs in the blue waters of the U.S. Virgin Islands. It has sheltered inlets and forested groves rising to dramatic windswept ridges and craggy cliffs. It lies just off the southeastern tip of St. Thomas on the one of the Caribbean uh, through the one of the Caribbean archipelagos. Archipelagos. I hope I'm saying that right. Three main islands. Now. Epstein owned properties in the three islands in the region. He based his private jets on St. Thomas with Little St. James, just a short helicopter trip away. The second property that was purchased in Great St. James uh, for $22.5 million was designed to shield Little St. James from surveillance. They don't want anybody getting any pictures, getting any information, recording anything that went on there. Okay, so he bought the island next to it just to shield it from surveillance. Now, they say the epicenter of his sexual acts was Little St. James. It had complete privacy and control with a staff of about 70 catering to every whim and bound to strict secrecy. Epstein brought Little St. James from Ventura capitalist Ark Cumming uh, via a shell company in 1998, reportedly paying just under $8 million. Now, first, he rooted out all of the native vegetations to plant palm trees and later began a massive program of building and remodeling. In 2016, Epstein brought the island, uh, uh, brought the island of Great St. James about twice as large, 165 acres. And it was alleged that he pretended that the real buyer was a Dubai businessman named Sultan Ahmed bin Sulayim. Epstein built a plush mansion with an outside terrace connecting the master bedroom and the swimming pool along with a uh, desalination system on St. James. Now, satellite photos and videos show a sprawling network of terraces, cottages, beach houses, swimming pools, docks, utility buildings, um, a helipad, a tennis court, slipways, some kind of enclosed lake or lagoon and various huts of unknown purposes. Now, they all are connected by palm-lined roads where golf buggies ferry guests from one place to another. Visuals show that at the other end of Epstein's Manor is a squat, a boxy blue and white striped structure. It was often referred to as a temple surrounded by a terrace with a blue labyrinth motif. An investigation by Business Insider revealed that the dome-like structure was most likely a private study and music room for Epstein. So it was like a zen light, a zen like, a zen like retreat where Epstein strolled around in flip flops with meditative music and women often sunbathing topless, uh, reportedly, according to a former employee. Epstein and his guests were always accompanied by attractive and suspicious women. The island had staff of about 70 and they were sworn to secrecy and instructions to be away from Epstein's site when doing their work. Uh, they were also forbidden to enter either of Epstein's two offices in the main manor, one of which housed a closely guarded steel safe. According to the LA Times, Epstein also had an enthusiasm of, uh, for pirate treasure, his name for old rum bottles and crockery found about the island. Now, it looks like they have a video of it. Hold on, let me see what this is. Okay, I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this. Register NDAs for everyone. I know that's right. It's exactly what I was thinking, honey.
No, that well, it's absolutely a beautiful place, but just the thought of the creepy things that went on there, yeah, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near it, but that's just me. Okay, so now let's talk about this Nickelodeon Jeffrey Epstein conspiracy theory. They say it's pretty wild, but is it true? Just want y'all to pay attention. Everything is always conspiracy theories, according to some. Like up, everyone, please like and share. So here's what they say. Since Quiet on the Set, the expose on Nickelodeon that revealed a toxic work environment and numerous numerous SE actual harassments and assault allegations online. Uh, I'm sorry, and assault allegations, online sleuths are digging more into the kids' network and falling prey to conspiracy theories. Uh, there's, they're now tying Nickelodeon to Jeffrey Epstein. Conspiracy theorists have long tried to connect the dots between Nickelodeon and the wealthy financier, a convicted SEX offender, uh, way before the bombshells dropped in the Investigation Discovery miniseries. Uh, but this latest fascination comes from the broadcaster's current logo. Now, at the heights of Epstein's operations, he owned Little St. James, an island in the U.S. Virgin Islands, where it's alleged much of his SEX trafficking crimes took place. As some theorists suggest the island's shape looks a lot like the current Nickelodeon Splat logo. Of course, there's no proof of tying Nickelodeon to Epstein at all, and the network's logo has changed seven times since its inception in 1977. Uh, they say it doesn't end there. In 2020, a viral and since debunked Facebook post suggested that the address found on SpongeBob SquarePants' driver's license is the same as a building on Epstein's private island. The false post, which was made by Shelby Ellamack, uh, read saying, uh, so can we talk about how uh, SpongeBob's address on his license is the address for Jeffrey Epstein's uh, P Island? Two slides are screenshots of me searching this up so you know it's not photoshopped. This is truly sick. All of these cartoons are tainted with X files. Our kids are not safe. This is breaking my heart. This is what the person posted. Now she shared two images, a screenshot of SpongeBob's driver's license next to the search results from Google or from Googling Little St. James's Island theme park on Epstein's Island. Both contain the address 124 Conch Street, Bikini Bottom. Of course, <clears throat> excuse me, of course, as Google Maps, uh, Google Maps Help Center page explains, anyone can publicly add places like a business or landmark to the map by searching for an address and clicking on the add, the add a missing place option. Meaning that anyone could have done that. Now, do y'all believe this? Do you all believe this? I'm sorry. Say that anyone could have done this. Do they really think we're foolish? Let me see if I can look this up real quick. Hold on. Let me just see if I can look this up real quick. Because I have, I find it all so interesting. Now, let me see here. Okay, here it is. Here's SpongeBob's. So let's look at this. Because I haven't looked at it before. Hold on. Let me see if I can enlarge this. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this. Like, up, everyone. Please like and share. Y'all see that? There it is right there. Bikini bottom. And then it says SpongeBob SquarePants, 124 Conch Street. Bikini bottom. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now let's see what it says about Epstein's uh, island. Hold on. Hold on. Little St. James Island theme park. Okay. Let me just copy and paste this real quick. Like, up, everyone, please like and share. Yeah, I don't see it coming up. Hold on. I don't even see anything coming up. 
Uh, they likely took it down because I don't see anything coming up. As you all can see, hold on, I'm gonna show my show my screen because all I see is just pictures of, of the theme park. Let me click on something else. Okay, here's here's an article that pops up. Posted July the 27th of 2020. According to SpongeBob fandom page, uh, iterations of SpongeBob's driver's license have appeared in eight episodes throughout the series. Okay, let me skip past all that. Okay, the post on social media claimed that 124 Con Street is the address of the theme park called Ledges of Little St. James. Okay, so let me type that in, Ledges of Little St. James. Okay, well, nothing shows up anytime you type it in. The only thing I'm seeing, let me show you all what I'm seeing because I find it all nefarious. This is what I'm seeing when I um, type it in. Angela said, this society is sick and doomed. I absolutely agree. Okay. Y'all see that? When I type in the address, nothing but articles coming up trying to debunk it. That's all I see. But hold on. It looks like someone did a TikTok about it. Hold on. Let me see here. No, that's just someone saying the same thing. Oh, you know what? Hold on, beloveds. That's someone posted something about it on Twitter. Hold on. Hold on. Let me just look this up real quick. The address that's on SpongeBob driver license is Jeffrey Epstein's Island. It was right in front of us. Hold on. Hold on, beloveds. I'm going to send it to my email so I can show it. And I'm going to turn the music off, though, the volume. Okay, I find it all so nefarious. And like I told you, they always want to say something's a conspiracy theory when we start finding out random stuff. Okay, here, here we go. I knew somebody on TikTok would have it on there. Let me just mute the volume. Because all we need to do is see it. Lights up, everyone. Please like and share. Here we go. I don't know if you all can see that. I don't know if you all can see that, but clearly he said it has the same address. Okay, so they need to miss me with it. Now, what do you all have to say about all of this? Because this stuff is hidden in plain sight. It's right there in our faces. This stuff is right there in our faces. And, and let's not forget, do I need to do another expose on, on uh, Disney? Because I have shown you all the receipts years ago, back in 2020, about all that shady stuff going on with Disney with those cartoon characters and the subliminals and all of that. So, yeah, are we surprised? Should we be surprised? Absolutely not. This is what they've been doing. Anybody allowing their children to be taken by CPS don't care about them, says Angela. Well, I agree because that's one of the uh, biggest uh, trafficking organizations, according to some sources. All right. Allegedly. Byron B said, that would be nice, Queen. Okay, so you know what? I think I'll do that tomorrow, beloved. I think I'll do that tomorrow because I still have those receipts. Uh, so with that all being said, uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I'm going to conclude this broadcast because I have to go live on the backup channel. 
So I want to thank you all for tuning in. Please like and share. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click the notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. And if you have not been receiving your notifications, please double check and make sure that you're still subscribed. All right. With that all being said, Rodney said he saw it. Okay, absolutely. Rick said great broadcast. Thank you. Jamal said love you, woman. I love you right black. All right. So with that all being said, hold on. T. Cope says they killed the representative who blew the whistle on CPS. Are you serious? Honey, I didn't know that. I'm going to look into it. This is all crazy. Tisha said, new subscriber, love your channel. Thank you, beloved. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, so everyone enjoy the rest of this beautiful day, and I hope to see you on the next chat. Moderators, please, one of you drop the, um, please drop the link for the next video in the chat. Um, Mr. Elevation said, I remember those receipts, queen. Thank you, beloved. Okay, so each one, teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloveds, to keep the most high first in your lives. Flavor all in my skin, God all in my blood, kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you're done. They show no love for the queen, why you hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans? I got dreams like King Luther, shed blood like Kusa. You ain't helping my people, I ain't got nothing to say to ya. I want all the smoke like hookah. Talking reparations, America won't be great until they give us compensation. I'm like, uh. I'm the hottest right now That's See right. a bunch of lames out here trying to jock on my style They be doing too much I'm the queen, it's too easy It's like they all at Popeyes How they be talking so greasy Real I just sit back and laugh While these haters get madder So nefarious how they don't want my pockets with chatter I tell them they can do better These snakes in the grass Can leave a bite on your ass Cause y'all be trusting too fast I got my foot on the gas other one on they necks Dropping receipts on haters You better show some respect I'm never facing regrets We only facing the threats Running through every challenge Like a relay break, no sweat It's a cold game So I got that blanket with me Now that my people awaken Ain't no going to sleep I do not play by my peace This time I'm playing for keeps You talking slick But when I see you like them ends We gon' meet And I got gold all in my skin all in my blood. my blood, kings all in my circle. You touch one of mine and you done. They show no love for the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got gold all in my skin? God all in my blood, my blood. kings all in my circle. You touch one of mine and you done. That's they it. show no love for the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got gold?